Godot 4 has brought some new things to the table that makes creating multiplayer games even easier. In this video, I'll go over the new features and demonstrate how they were used to build a tank game in the background. I'm going to be focusing on the high level multiplayer features in this video. If you'd like to see a tutorial on the low level stuff, drop a comment below. Let's start with the new additions. First up, we have the multiplayer spawner node. To set up this node, you provide it with a root node path and a list of spawnable scenes. Then, whenever a scene from the list is instantiated under the root node, it will automatically get replicated across all connected peers. If that node is later deleted, that gets synced across the lobby too. It also keeps track of the scenes it spawned, so if a new client connects later, it can instantiate all the scenes for them that it needs to. Here's how I'm using it. In the main scene, I have a plain node called Network, which I'm using as my spawn route. I've then populated the auto spawn list with all the scenes I want automatically replicating, including the player. Then in my lobby code, when a new client connects, I create a new player for them and just add it as a child of the network node. This will then be synced to all players without any extra code from us, and as already demonstrated, all the existing players will be spawned in for the new client too. Scenes to replicate don't have to be instantiated directly under the network node either. It works with nested scenes too. Here I have a basic shield scene. It's set up to deflect bullets and deletes itself after 3 seconds. Then, when the player is killed and respawns, I just instantiate the shield as a child of the player. Because the shield is also within the auto spawn list and the player is under the network node, the shield is automatically replicated for all peers without any extra multiplayer logic from us. The new multiplayer synchronizer node is fantastic for rapidly prototyping multiplayer games. It allows you to synchronize properties across clients without writing any code. To use this, just place it within a scene, set the route and give it a path to the properties you want to synchronize. If a client is a network authority, it will update the set properties on its peers. You can also set if these properties only need to sync on spawn and continuously. You can even set how frequently you want to sync this information. By default, synchronizations will happen every network frame. Here is an example of it being used within the tank game. The bullet scene has a multiplayer synchronizer, which synchronizes both the bullet's position and rotation. No code is required, it just works. One thing to note though, I used Godot 4.0 Beta 2 for this example, and I ran into an issue. When the server is a network authority, everything works fine, but in the tank game I had each player be the network authority of their own player scene. When this is the case, the multiplayer synchronizer didn't sync the properties of the player scene at all. An easy workaround I found though, was to add a child node to the player scene and attach the synchronizer to that instead. Then I create some properties on that child node in a script and sync them rather than the actual player's properties. For some reason, this fixed the issues and everything worked as expected. Another thing to note is that while it's fine to prototype your game by just adding a bunch of properties to these synchronizers, it's not the most efficient way of sending data and could cause issues at scale. You can fix this by creating a dedicated property to sync where you can add your own optimizations to reduce the size of the sync state. The example on the screen is from an article on Godot's website that I'll link in the description. The example shows health and mana being encoded as two 8-bit integers which will be smaller than sending them as the default 64-bit integers, saving on bandwidth. Finally, let's cover the changes to R sets and RPCs. If you don't know, R sets are a way of setting properties on scenes over the network. R sets have been completely removed from Godot 4. This is due to them providing a lack of control and poor performance. It's better to just use RPCs anyway. RPC stands for Remote Procedure Call, and as the name suggests, are a way of calling functions remotely over the network. They've undergone quite a few changes from Godot 3 to Godot 4. To mark a function as an RPC, you just use the RPC annotation. By default, this RPC will only be callable from the node's network authority, which defaults to the server. To make a call to the RPC, call the RPC function on the node with the function name as a string parameter. Any arguments can be listed afterwards. This will then call the function on all other peers. If you want to call an RPC on a specific peer, use the RPC ID function and supply it with a unique network ID of the peer you want to call it on. In this example, I'm passing 1, as that is the default ID of the server. Configuring RPCs now happens within the annotation, making them much easier to configure. 
This example is an RPC that can be called by any peer, not just the network authority. It will also get called locally and will be sent reliably as opposed to unreliably. I'll leave a link to an article below that goes through these configurations in more detail. I think that'll do it for this video. If you'd like to see a step-by-step -step tutorial on how to build a multiplayer game in Godot 4, like the tank example or something similar, leave a comment below and I'll get that sorted. If there's any other topics you'd like to see covered in a video, please put your suggestions in the comment section too. If you found this video useful, please subscribe to catch more videos in the future. Cheers!